welcome back to the channel guys today i'll be taking a look at my x570 unify bios settings for my amd ryzen 9 5950x now i often get comments on what bios settings do i use and how do you get the scores that you get i'm going to show you all of my settings but before i go into this i want to make you aware that i got a decent um water loop custom configuration 360 millimeter radiator and um, an ek velocity water blocks i got really really good cooling for my cpu so it really does depend on how well you can cool your chip when it comes to getting really high results also uh, your memory is very very important when it comes to ryzen it loves fast ram i'm using a patriot 44 100 megahertz viper steel kit however i'm running it um, between 3800 megahertz or sometimes 37, 33 for my daily use because you want to have a one to one ratio with your infinity fabric so it needs to match your memory speed and this is very very important to getting the maximum out of a Ryzen so uh, again please do not copy my memory settings if you haven't got the same RAM um, I use quite high voltage and you have to have Samsung BDI which kind of can deal with that type of voltage you could easily fry your ram if you don't have the, the correct uh, ram that i'm using so please don't copy every single setting that i use in this this is just kind of me showing you what i'm doing and of course the risks are your own if you choose uh, to copy them so let's get into it first of all i'm using the latest bios um it's the, the the latest one that came out i believe it was the 24th of february 2021 so i think it's the combo bios 1.2 001 don't quote me on the, the number exactly but it's around about that now you may see the v core voltage is very high 1.49 volts i've actually got my voltage so let's just get straight into it so this is the voltage settings my cpu voltage is at auto my cpu north bridge and soc voltage is at auto everything in terms of voltage apart from dram is at auto and this is literally the best thing to do to get the best out of your Ryzen um, 5000 series uh, CPU. I've been messing around with it for so long. Nothing beats auto and yes, 1.49 is high, but it only does this on like very, very light workloads, maybe one or two cores. It will boost to that voltage when it's under high load, it will drop down to like 1.35 or 1.36, something like that. So it is perfectly safe as long as the, the load is light. Now, um, before I go in any further, I want to go into advanced CPU configuration. Um, everything here, I'll give you a moment to look at it, is um, not really important. You can use different things like performance regulator. So there are certain applications that your BIOS can tune to get the best score, but you don't really need to use this. This does affect how the chip boosts in a little way, so I wouldn't really mess with that. I'll just leave it disabled. Um, you, of course, you can enable or disable CPU virtualization. If you use like something like um, Windows VM, you need to have this enabled, obviously, to use the, your virtual cores. So don't worry. If you're not using like VMware, then it's not really essential to have this enabled. So AMD C, um, CBS, the only thing I'd come in here for is to disable global C state. You don't really want any power saving options um, running in the background. That's literally all you need to disable. Um, AMD overclocking this is where the magic happens now precision boost overdrive um, will look at will be at auto by default what you want to do is go down to advanced and then it will give you a choice of um, your PBO limits precision boost overdrive if you don't know what that is and the precision boost overdrive scaler leave both of these at auto you do not need to touch these you don't really need to touch max CPU boost clock override unless you really really want to push your single core to the absolute limit and you need to find what that limit is 200 megahertz now is the maximum on previous biases you could put in 500 megahertz but honestly you don't need to go any higher than 200 megahertz if i leave this at auto my maximum boost clock will be 5.05 gigahertz if i put my maximum which is 200 megahertz uh, the maximum um, boost clock on a single core will be 5.15 gigahertz. So this is how you get your absolute maximum single core boost. Now, thermal throttle limit, I've left at 95. My cooling setup doesn't get anywhere close to this, but it's always good to 
put the maximum so you avoid throttling pretty much all cases um so that is pretty much it for that part curve optimizer now this is subject to your um silicon quote um basically silicon lottery and the quality of your chip um i'm using all cores negative at 27 that is the the maximum i can do the maximum number is 30 so the higher the number the better uh the uh performance you get from using curve optimizer now some chips won't even boot at negative 27 so you have to kind of do this yourself and trial and error so what i would do is i'll start with negative 5 see how you get on negative 10 and then keep going up and up until benchmarks become unstable or you can't boot and things like that you have to find that this is unique to your own chip by the way this isn't just something you can just dial in and, and, and think it's going to work everything else just leave at auto hopefully this isn't too long-winded for you guys i just want to kind of go into depth just so it does avoid any future questions in the future i'm just going to refer anyone who asks for settings to this video now ram again i want to reiterate that this is subject to my ram please do not use these settings as a general uh, kind of every case um, use you really need to have um, very very high quality Samsung BDI if you want to be running these settings so uh, this is my everyday setting 37 33 megahertz this is the um, F clock which is otherwise the infinity fabric speed 1867 so this is basically you want to be making sure this matches half of your RAM speed because you know DDR is double data so times 1867 by two, you get this. So you wanna be making sure you run half of that. So it's like one to one ratio. This is how you get the best single core performance out of the Ryzen chips. You can run higher um, memory speeds and lower F clock, but you don't get the, the best out of the chips. I would, I would always advise to one -on -one, run a one to one ratio, even at the expense of a lower memory clock speed, it gives the best performance, believe me. Um, so I'll go into the RAM sub timing. So I know some guys are interested in that. Um, so I'm using 14, 14, 14, 14, 28 for the main timings. Uh, sub timings now 42 for TRC, 290 for TRFC, for 1, 2, and 4. So whatever you do here will just kind of input that automatically. I'm just going to scroll down now. No need for me to kind of go through every single one of these. Honestly, I don't understand what what these are but i use dram calculator to basically arrive at these settings and then um, tweak them accordingly so if you want to um, do something like this with your own ram just go to dram calculator put in your memory put in your speed and then it will kind of give you a profile that will boost your performance and i cannot stress enough how much of a performance boost you get from tweaking your ram do not just plop your ram in use xmp and just start running if you've take the time to tune your RAM you can get so much more performance out of your Ryzen system it's you know it's unbelievable so when it comes to uh, the voltage settings again digital power so this is like your load line calibration just leave that at auto it works best when you when everything else is at auto leave your load line calibration at auto as well trust me these Ryzen chips do a very very good job of managing their voltage out of the box by themselves honestly us going in and meddling with things generally doesn't um, help things unless you want to run an all core overclock or you you know you're doing other things and you need to be on high load for a long time maybe you want to put in low voltage and a lower boost clock then i understand again my dram voltage is unique to my ram most ram will not like this it may fry your chip it may not boot please don't do this unless you know your ram is good for this kind of voltage so that is pretty much it that is everything i use for my settings so i'm gonna get out of my bios now and show you some scores so you guys can kind of see what the performance i'm getting from these settings okay guys i'm at my desktop now i'm just going to quickly show you some benchmarks to give you an overall idea of what kind of performance i'm getting i've got core temp there to my right so you guys can keep an eye on temps as well because i know you're interested in that aspect of things as well so let's start off with cpu z or cpu id this will give you a, a general idea of um, how well your single core and multi core performance is. So, this is version 1.95. Please download uh, the latest version because sometimes the scores will change depending on what version you're using. So, I'll just quickly bench the CPU and you can see my multi core and uh, single core performance. Let's see how that, see how that does.
So as you can see, uh, getting 702 on the CPU single thread and for the multi-thread I'm getting 13761. Uh, maximum temp went up to 60 degrees, so not too bad. And that's actually a pretty good score, so I'll put that into context now. Sometimes the runs may vary. If you run it a second time, you may get higher results. It all depends. Now, if we kind of look at what um, other CPUs are getting, as you can see, I'm doing 703. i9 9900 k sorry, is doing 584. 9900KS uh, is doing 582. This far exceeds what anything else is doing on the market. Of course, 11900K is coming soon. Now, I'm sure that will beat this, no problem. But um, right now, this is really um, doing a really, really good job. Multi-core, just forget about it. It destroys everything, even Intel um, high-end desktop um, CPU. So we don't even need to look into that. This is more kind of looking at single-threaded specifically. As you can see, it does very, very well. Now let's move on to something that everyone's more familiar with, let's say like Cinebench R20. Now if you're wondering why I'm not running R23, it's because R23 wants you to do a 10 minute run for both single and both multi before you get a score, which is something that, for just, just for the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. So for CPU, we're just gonna run the multi-core uh, score now, and you guys can see my temps on the side um 67 degrees at the moment which is really good because these chips get hot and if you keep them cool they will perform like no one's business and that's the secret really if you can keep your chip really cool you, it will do amazing things for you especially when everything's set to auto um so right now i'm getting 1.2 oh sorry 12135 obviously i've got higher scores in the past but just for now this is what i'm getting with my everyday settings um, that's really, really high. That's basically on the level of a 4.7 gigahertz all core overclock almost. So that's all cores we're doing at least 4.6 gigahertz, no problem. I'm not going to run single core because it's going to take far too long. What I will do is I'll open, I'll do um, maybe, I'll put some links in the description so you guys can see what you get for single core. Um, I'll run some more benchmarks though. So the highest temps we've observed so far, 68 degrees. I'll run Geekbench 5. This is another popular one. And uh, we'll see um, what kind of performance we get from here. So this is a trial mode. You don't need to buy it or anything. It's just a test. So Geekbench will also tell you what your max boost clock is. So as you can see, 5.15 gigahertz is the max boost clock of this chip with the settings I'm using. So that's quite handy. You won't see this often, but if you have something like um, HW Info 64 running in the background, you'll just look at your max boost, you will see it hit that. So let's run the benchmark now and, and see what kind of scores I get. So this test takes about two minutes. It does do um, a number of kind of everyday tasks for, I don't know, like office use. And then it does a bit of uh, rendering task and um, productivity tasks. And it just does an overall test. This will kind of expose, um, let's just say, unstable RAM as well as unstable CPU overclocks as well. So it's kind of good to run this even when you're doing um, stability testing. It's not essentially very, very strenuous, but it does put your CPU in situations where you may crash where you otherwise wouldn't on something like Prime 95 or maybe um, OCCT if I got that correctly. I haven't used that in a while, but yeah, it's a good little test. And of course you get a score at the end and you can kind of compare it with the user database, which is always nice to see where you are. As you can see here, um, Core Temp will kind of monitor your boost clocks. As you can see, all cores were boosting to 4.823 very, very briefly. And you can kind of to see what kind of boost clocks you're getting in real time. How accurate it is, I'm not too sure, but it's some kind of um, barometer anyway to kind of see what you're doing, um, depending on the test. Again, voltage is also here. You can see it kind of wildly fluctuating from 1.39 to 1.437 to 0 0.95. It really all depends on the task. So when you see your voltage at 1.49 in a BIOS, you shouldn't really be too concerned because it's something that only happens again on a very, very low usage or a very, very light load. So it's it's perfectly safe as long as you're not got all your cores loaded up 
at 1.49 gigahertz or 16 cores and you're not going to cause any damage to your cpu and this is actually in the amd kind of uh briefing material if you actually go and look into it when they announce ryzen and pbo2 it kind of tells you what to expect so 1791 for the single core score 19463 for the multi-core so the way i've got this set up it gives you the best of the single core and it gives you the best of the multi-core all at the same time you can run this benchmark and validate that yourself you may find that you're getting considerably lower on one and higher on the other and you kind of got to tweak it to get the balance so that is it there for uh the cinebench and the uh, geek bench scores i can get higher when i'm not like obviously demonstrating and i haven't got like my core temp running in the background and i'm using my mac settings but this is just kind of give you an idea what my everyday settings are like so hopefully this was useful any questions don't be shy i'll try my best to get back to you again um hopefully this has helped you guys out thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video